Welcome and God's peace to you. I'm Pastor Zachariah Shippen. And I'm Pastor Emily Shipman. We serve the Northwest United Lutheran Parish in the towns of Crosby, Ambrose, Alamo, and Wild Rose, North Dakota. It is our prayer as you watch this video that you would hear God's word for your life today and that your faith in God will grow. May you come to know God's love for you more and more each day. Our first reading today comes from Acts. It can be found in your pew Bible on page 91. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the divine, definite plan and foreknowledge of God, crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my souls to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn oath with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today comes from is Psalm 16, and we'll read it responsively. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my good above all other. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is a fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our second reading comes from 1 Peter 1, 3 to 9. It can be found on page 182. A reading from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God, through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, although perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Gospel can be found in page 88 of your New Testament in your pew Bibles. It's John 20, verses 19 through 31. The Holy Gospel according to John. 
When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he's, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said again to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and, at, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have seen and yet who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, that he through believing, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Today is the eighth day, resurrection plus one week. We are waiting like the disciples, door shut. Thomas, the backslider, has been reclaimed. And we're remembering the last time we saw Jesus enter the room. We recall his first words, peace be with you. Jesus said those words three times in our text, and each time they brought a different kind of peace. There is a peace that rescues. The disciples had shut the doors for fear of what, that what had happened to Jesus would soon happen to them. When suddenly Jesus was present with them, the fear vanished with the realization of victory. Those of you who have watched the movie The Passion know that it's two grueling and graphic hours depicting the arrest, beating, trial, and crucifixion of Jesus. Afterwards, when Jesus appeared to the disciples, he had the marks of his suffering, but it was obvious those marks didn't have him anymore. There is a peace that is surreal when the darkness of disaster and defeat are replaced by the morning light of victory. When Jesus said, peace be with you, he was saying, I am with you, your victory, your peace. I am here to save. Even the name Jesus means God saves, saving peace. And peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. The second kind of peace Jesus brought with him is sending peace. The Father sent Jesus into the world to seek and to save which was lost, us. He told the disciples, and he also tells us, that in the same way the Father sent him on the mission of reconciling all people to him, Jesus sends us to that same mission. A story is told of a woman who wanted peace in the world and peace in her heart, but she was very frustrated. The world seemed to be falling apart. She would read the papers and surf the internet and listen to the six o'clock news and she would get depressed and heartbroken. One day, she decided to go shopping, and she went into the mall and picked a store at random. She walked in and was surprised to see Jesus behind the counter. She knew it was Jesus because he looked just like she, 
the pictures she's seen. She finally got up the nerve and asked, excuse me, are you Jesus? I am. Do you work here? Uh, no, I own the store. Oh, well, what do you sell here? Just about everything, Jesus said. Feel free to walk up and down the aisles, make a list and see what it is that you want and then come back and we'll see what we can do for you. She did just that. She walked up and down the aisles. There was for sale peace on earth, no more war, no hunger or poverty, peace in families, no more drugs, harmony, clean air, careful use of resources. She wrote furiously. By the time she got to, back to the counter, she had a very long list. Jesus took the list, skimmed through it, looked up at her and smiled. No problem. And then he bent down behind the counter and picked out all sorts of things, stood up and laid out the packets. She asked, well, what, are, what are these? Seed packets, Jesus said. This is a catalog store. She said, you mean I don't get the finished product? Oh no, this is a place of dreams. You come and see what it looks like and I give you the seeds. You plant the seeds, you go home and nurture them and help them to grow and someone else reaps the benefits. Oh, she said, and she left the store without buying anything. Sometimes it is easier to dwell on saving peace on earth than on peace which compels us to go into the world with the good news. But, he, but Jesus said peace to them one more time. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. This was the eighth day, a whole week later than the first time Jesus said peace to them. This time he came back when Thomas was there. Thomas may have felt pretty second class as a disciple, but Jesus came back and spoke the same wonderful word to him. Peace. We all come to Jesus at different times and in different walks, but his peace is still his peace. Symbiosis is a cooperative, mutually beneficial relationship between two people or groups. To be symbiotically peaceful is to get along with each other in the kind of love God planned for us. Three times Jesus said peace to his followers. Saving peace that covers our sins and saves us from hell. Sending peace that commissions us to go bring people to the fold. Symbiotic peace that conjoins us and holds us together in a bond of brotherhood and the selfless love of God. Together this saving, sending, and symbiosis making peace is the whole point of Easter. It is what Paul meant when he told us that God was in, Christ, was in Christ to reconcile the whole world to himself and has given us that very same mission. Peace is the work of reconciliation. First, I am reconciled to God with his saving peace, having been rescued from my sins. Then I take part in rescuing others because of his sending peace. And I am taught to live in symbiotic God, God love, the peace that passes all understanding. It is a matter of living in peace. So I want to be, take a quick poll this morning. Lenten season is a season set aside for us to reflect a time of contemplation with the intention of searching for peace in this anxious world. And now I'm just curious. Anybody feel like they've now achieved the greatest possible peace in your life? What about the disciples? Our scripture reading from John this morning tells the story of the first Easter evening. Now in our minds, this is a joyous time. Just think about the wonderful celebration of Christ's resurrection that we had in this place last week. Easter is always such a happy time. And certainly we would think it would have been so from the very beginning. The disciples mourn Christ's crucifixion. But now, we have seen the empty tomb. Praise God, Christ is victorious. Except, that's not their demeanor, is it? John's Gospel tells us that on the evening of that first Easter, the disciples were locked away in a room. 
They were scared and they were confused. They were afraid of the Jewish authorities. They were experiencing anything but joy and peace. They did not know or understand what we do now. And that's why I want to talk about peace this morning. The simple matter of fact is, we can talk about peace until we're blue in the face. We can seek peace in our lives in every way possible, but ultimately, there are still going to be times in our life when we are anxious or fearful, just like the disciples on that first Easter morning, Easter evening. Maybe despite our best efforts, we are feeling anxious and fearful right now. This is why we need to hear this story of the disciples' second encounter with Christ on the day he was resurrected. Listen again to John's words. That evening, the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Here was a timid, frightened group of followers. And really, it's no wonder. Just a little over a week ago, throngs of people were welcoming Jesus, waving palm branches and singing his praises. Then, just a few days later, he is arrested, put on trial, and crucified on a cross. The crucifixion of Jesus has devastated the disciples. And no matter what anyone said to them, not even the women's testimony of an empty tomb, not, they could not be shaken of their grief and sorrow. The picture John gives us is of a shell-shocked shell -shocked bunch of disciples who gather in hiding to mourn the death of their leader. But they also gather in a common fear, afraid of that knock on the door that will signal they are next. Fear shut them out and anxiety locked them up. Even though the light of life had dawned that very day with Christ's resurrection, the disciples were still not experiencing Christ's peace. But look what happens next. At this pinnacle of their anxiety, Christ appears. And listen to the very first thing that Jesus says to his disciples. Peace be with you. And listen to the second thing Christ says. Peace be with you. And hear the words that Christ said a week later when he appeared again for Thomas's benefit. Peace be with you. Three times Jesus says to his disciples, peace be with you. To me, that means two things. Jesus felt it was very important to say this to his disciples. And number two, the disciples really needed to hear it. They needed to be set free from the fear that locked them in, both literally and figuratively. They needed what only Christ could give them, peace, forgiveness, new hope, and a reason for living. And that's exactly what Christ did for them. It's what Christ does for us. He sets us free and makes us whole again. That's what the peace of Christ is all about, being restored to the goodness of that God created in us, being made whole, being restored to live and to love again without fear and anxiety. Christ gave the disciples peace because that's what they needed most, when they needed it the most. And Christ offers us the same peace as well. It's easy when troubles surround us and difficulties come our way to forget God's promise and act as if Christ never existed. But we also need to understand that the promise of God in Jesus Christ is not that our lives will be worry-free or trouble-free. There are going to be times we are huddled in that ti proverbial tiny closet with storms whirling around us. When we are lying in a hospital bed crippled by illness or disease, when grief or depression saps all our energy and our hope. Yet in those moments, Christ's words remain, peace be with you. No matter how we try to barricade ourselves, the living Christ comes to us, unhindered by our fears, unblocked by our defenses. Christ does not scold us for our fear or anxiety, but simply says, peace be with you, offering anxiety's antidote. You see, the peace that Christ brings to us is different, and I think that's sometimes why we feel that peace is so elusive. The peace Jesus offers doesn't necessarily have anything to do with tranquility or harmony. This peace is lit about living out Christ's own mission, 
And sometimes that will be trying, difficult, and scary, which is why our journey for peace is often difficult. Jesus' peace is the sort that brings back into the fold the outcast and the marginalized. This is the peace that turns upside down the societal conventions of first and last, blessed and cursed, rich and poor. Jesus' peace invites the lion to see the lamb as a neighbor and friend, the Jew to speak with the Samaritan, the prostitute to dine with the Pharisee. Peace, you see, is more than just a freedom from fear. It is a new way of living and being in the world. True peace is something we all want, and it's something we all need, not only for ourselves, but for our communities and for our world. As we focus on finding peace in an anxious world with these Easter words from Christ, there are a few thoughts I, need, I think we need to take home with us. First, there are certain things that we can and should do in our lives in an effort to overcome some of the sources of anxiety and experience more peace. We need to celebrate all the good in our lives and in the world and not be overwhelmed by the negative. We need to stay connected with God's spirit in our lives and remember our identity as God's beloved. Not just here in this place at this time, but as we go about our daily lives. We need to pray regularly. We need to take time to build and foster real relationships, not only with one another, but especially with God. We need to live as best we can in the light of God's light. But even, as we do, but even as we seek to do those things, we must realize that despite our best efforts, there will be times when things go south and peace will seem like nothing more than a pipe dream. It happened to Christ's disciples and it will happen to us. But if we can follow Christ in his way, then God's promise of peace never changes and it never goes away. We will go through some tough spots. We will walk through some dark valleys and we may even stand at the foot of the cross. Still, no matter how we might be barricaded behind fear and anxiety, Christ will come among us and he will say as many times as we need to hear it, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The peace of our risen Christ be with you all. And now we are going We would love to have you join us sometime for worship. Here is our parish worship schedule and our contact information. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.